Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Martin Luther King Jr. All of us should be very grateful for the needed and overdue societal changes that God in his providence used Martin Luther King Jr. to help bring about and enact in this country, the United States of America. But was he a Christian? He was a preacher, but was he truly a Christian? So a few weeks ago, John MacArthur was doing a live Q&A session at his church, Grace Community Church, and a question was asked him uh, about T4G and the Gospel Coalition, and John MacArthur answered that question, and he talked about, um, he kind of lamented uh, the fact that TGC hosted the MLK 50 conference back in 2018, which lauded uh, Martin Luther King Jr. as a as a Christian, a true believer. Uh, but John MacArthur said that um, Martin Luther King Jr. was not a Christian at all, and that caused quite a firestorm on social media. Articles were written uh, rebuking John MacArthur for that, and I want to I want us to look at one of the more prominent articles that was written by a man named Justin Gibney at Christianity Today. And so uh, we're going to look at the article, but we're also going to look at Martin Luther King Jr. We're going to look at his theology, his beliefs, and we're also going to talk about some of the personal integrity and character issues related to Martin Luther King Jr. Now, to help me in this discussion, I have employed the aid of two good friends of mine, Virgil Walker and Daryl Harrison, both of whom have done enormous amounts of research into Martin Luther King Jr., and so they are going to help us in this discussion. So without any further delay, here's my interview with Virgil Walker and Daryl Harrison as we talk about Martin Luther King Jr. and consider the question, was he a Christian? Well, Daryl, Virgil, brothers, good to see y'all. Uh, it is a joy to have you on my YouTube channel. And um, folks, Daryl and Virgil and I have been uh, friends for the last number of years. We've spoken at uh, a number of the same conferences together, and and I've come to really treasure and value their friendship and very, very much like-minded and brothers from another mother, as they would say. So uh, brothers, welcome to my channel. Thank y'all so much for coming on. Thank, thanks for having us, man. Justin, thanks, man. Glad to be with you. Yeah, my my honor, my honor. So, um, brothers, tell us, just give us a brief little bio sketch of each of you and uh, like who you are, what your titles are, what you do, and maybe even talk about the Just Thinking podcast, anything like that. So, I guess we'll go in uh, we'll go in alphabetical order. Daryl, you first. Yeah. So, uh, Justin, first of all, man, thanks for having us on. Uh, we love you, man. We love it. Just want to say that to everybody who's watching, how much we love you, man, and your work uh, for uh, on, on behalf of Christ and his kingdom. So thank you, brother, for having us on again. So, yeah, Daryl Harrison, um, co-host of the Just Thinking podcast, along with my partner in crime here, Virgil Walker. Uh, so current role right now, I'm on the pastoral staff at Redeemer Bible Church here in Gilbert, Arizona. So been on pastoral staff here since January of 2024, so about three months. Um, prior to that, spent the previous five years on staff at Grace to You, uh, which is the uh, media ministry of uh, Dr. John MacArthur. Um, just want to say hello to all my friends and uh, my dear friends back in uh, Southern California at Grace Church and at, at Grace to You. Um, so I'm originally from Atlanta, uh, which is where Burge is based out of now, Metro Atlanta. So originally from Atlanta. Married, my wife, Melissa, we have three adult children, uh, Yasmin, Colin, and Naomi. They all reside back in Georgia, which is where all of our family is. And um, yeah, that's about it. I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Verge now. Glad to be with you, Justin. It's a joy as always, man. Uh, I am Virgil Walker. Uh, again, half of, half of the dyna dynamic duo of the Just Thinking podcast. Uh, I am the uh, Vice President of Ministry Relations here uh, at G3 Ministries. I provide executive oversight for all of our conferences, workshops, uh, overseas tours and the like. And uh, I get to get the opportunity to engage uh, in ministry relationships, partnerships um, and donor relations. And so I uh, love what I get to do here. It's a joy to, to, to do that. Uh, I'm married uh, to Miss Tomika. 
uh, Walker, and uh, she's she's a she, that 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 captures a, a smile on Daryl's face because, uh, <laughs> like most uh, who have had a chance to engage my my dear bride, you definitely experienced Tamika. Uh, she's an experience. She's a joy to be around, and uh, uh, those is. who know her, those who know her know exactly uh, exactly what I mean. I've got we got three kiddos. Uh, two of them are back in Omaha, Nebraska. In fact, today, actually, Justin, as we're recording this uh, on March the 12th is actually my daughter's birthday. And so yeah. uh, excited for her. She just turned 25. She's there in Omaha with my uh, firstborn son, uh, uh, Princeton, uh, and then uh, a son who came with us here uh, to uh, on the trek from Omaha uh, to this new role here at G3 here in Douglasville, uh, Georgia. Uh, his name is Price, and uh, he's he's still still with us there. Uh, other than that, man, I do do a lot of things. Uh, uh, you know, not the least of which is the podcast. A lot of writing. Uh, Daryl and I've written uh, a lot on the on the topic. I know you're you're wanting to cover, and so we're excited to be with you. Thank you so much, brothers. Thank you. It is a joy to have you. So, all right, well, let's get down to brass tacks here. So the what started all of this, the genesis of this video, uh, a few weeks ago, as of this recording, John MacArthur was doing a Q&A session, live Q&A session at his church on a Sunday evening. And the question was asked him, um, kind of dealing with T4G and the Gospel Coalition, that was the, the broader context here that MacArthur was engaging. Uh, so I, I want to play that clip um right now for people to hear that so but within that context he also mentioned something about mlk martin luther king jr so let's listen to this watch this clip here and we'll come back on the other side yeah so there are there are some major organizations that have been around for the last uh, at least 10 years uh, one was the gospel coalition started out with noble intent to bring different people together, leaders, pastors, theologians, uh, around the gospel. It was very much like T4G, together for the gospel, uh, that, that had that conference. We had as many as 10,000 people. I was a part of that uh, every year at these huge conventions, and it was together for the gospel. But um, both of those organizations, well, T4G is, is basically non-existent. They, uh, they bought into the deceptiveness of the woke movement and the racial um, baiting that was going on a couple of years ago, and it literally put them out of existence. I was thinking the other day how interesting it was that the, the last panel discussion that I was on at a T4G event was, was to honor R.C. Sproul, who had died, and I, I spoke at his funeral. That this was, I think, 2017 or 2018. Uh, so t the T4G guys wanted to honor him uh, with a panel, and we we spent an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, and it was just beautiful tributes to RC from all of us who knew him so very, very well. And the strange irony was, a year later, they did the same thing for Martin Luther King, who was not a Christian at all whose life was immoral. I'm not saying he didn't do some social good, and I've always been glad that he was a pacifist or he could have started a real revolution. But you don't, you don't honor a non-believer um, who misrepresented everything about Christ and the gospel in an organization alongside honoring somebody like R.C. Sproul. Okay, brother. So, so we just heard John answering that question again. The broader context. He's saying, talking more about T4G and the Gospel Coalition than he was MLK. But the brief little comment there about MLK when he said that uh, MLK Jr., Martin Luther King Jr., was not a Christian at all, whose life was immoral. That sparked a rather furious uh, backlash and uh, article from Christianity Today which is led by, of course, Russell Moore. and uh, But this particular article was written by a man named Justin Gibney, and Justin Gibney is the head of the AND campaign. But let me read to you um, a, a quotation from this article, and I'll get y'all to respond. 
So Justin Gibney writes, MacArthur cast these condemnations casually with an apparent air of self-righteousness that suggests his theological expertise is paired with an infantile understanding of neighborly love and, and just dripping with condescension here. But he says, deep knowledge of systematic theology, unfortunately, can exist alongside a desperate need for remedial instruction on the greatest commandments and a failure to, quote, distinguish good from evil, including King's good work of peace and justice informed by Scripture and motivated by the gospel. I spoke at MLK 50, and I don't recall seeing any speakers who weren't unambiguously orthodox. MacArthur's accusations aren't only too lightly made, they are plainly slanderous. So, um, guys, uh, so Justin Gibney accuses... John MacArthur of slander, and uh, I might add that slander is a very serious sin listed in Romans 1, which marks the lives of unbelievers. So this is a pretty serious accusation. Um, is John MacArthur guilty of slander, as Justin Gibney asserts? If you want to kick us off. Yeah, I'll, I'll start by saying the, the short answer first and just say no. Absolutely not. I think there's uh, MacArthur's position uh, is informed uh, not by some uh, infantile idea, uh, as as G Justin Gibney asserts, but on the basis of of um, MLK's own writings, uh, what what Martin Luther King Jr. said himself, um, mm -hmm. based upon his own admissions. Uh, his his uh, you know the fact that he does not did not believe uh, in the deity of Christ that's documented that he did not believe uh, in the bodily resurrection of Christ that's documented he did not believe in the virgin birth that's documented he did not believe in hell uh, that's documented all of those are are documented not based upon some innuendo some idea some you know novice trite thought process or some lack of desire uh, to affirm King in some way. Um, those are King's words uh, that, that are, that anyone can, can read uh, for themselves. I've, I've written about it uh, and added links so that people can see uh, what King actually said about these things. And so I slander by no means, you know, Gibney may have said, you know, he, he's an error, uh, but to lay the charge of slander is is absolutely be, beyond the pale. Furthermore, if you go back to what uh, Gibney uh, asserts, I, I don't know who's editing uh, Christianity today. But let's just let's just start with the fact uh, that anytime you can get away, uh, even even in a even in a, uh, a an opinion piece by using words like an infantile understanding, mm -hmm. I, I think of all the things that you would say about MacArthur. Uh, the, the last thing that you would ever say about him is that he had an infantile understanding of the subject matter that he would engage in uh, from from the pulpit. You may disagree with that, uh, but the fact that, a, that an editor allowed that kind of language uh, into the piece speaks uh, volumes uh, about uh, about uh, about the agenda uh, that uh, that is there, not only with Gibney, but but also with with uh, Christianity today. I'll, I'll finally land the plane here. Um, and, and simply say, you know, that the, uh, the he given he says that the need for remedial instruction on the greatest commandment and a failure to distinguish good from evil, including King's good work at, of peace and justice informed by the scriptures and motivated by the gospel. I, I think perhaps given his ears were clogged uh, at the point at which he he if, if he would have paid attention, even in the short clip, uh, I did hear uh, MacArthur confirm or affirm. Uh, that there were some great civil rights things that uh, right. that 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 King did, and he he attributed those good things to him, uh, but also made the, laid the charge on the basis of King's own theology that he was not a Christian. So uh, th that whole that whole section, I mean, and that's just one section. I mean, we could we could go line by line through this piece and absolutely shred it to pieces. Uh, at the end of the day, his own language uh, kind of leaves let, lets us know that he has an agenda. When you write infantile understanding, when you talk about someone who needs remedial instruction, of all the things that you might say about MacArthur, 
uh, those those two things would not be a part of uh, any any sentence or paragraph that you would write uh, uh, related to him. Right. I, I mean, it, it's like Justin Gibney just can't couldn't even veil uh, the disdain that he has for John MacArthur, which I found absolutely appalling. But Daryl, um, help us here, brother. What what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Yeah. Just to add what to what you and Virgil have already said, I think um, Gibney's. Uh, arrogance is uh, representative of a lot of uh, woke social justicians who always think that they have the higher ground than anyone else. Uh, I think I think the consternation over ML King um, as a man, as a theologian, as a uh, representative of the church is really rooted in what I believe is the misunderstanding that the majority of professing Christians have, who believe that salvation comes by works. I mm. think that is at the root of mm. all the consternation that you're seeing demonstrated when a person like ML, MLK is objectively critiqued, objectively critiqued, because they're with, within their paradigm of what a Christian is, what Christianity is, what salvation is, is a... Uh, a uh, a paradigm of of the good person versus the bad person. So they see King yeah. as a good person who did quote unquote, and I'm I'm saying good with air quotes, who is a good person who did good works, who helped a lot of people, and isn't that a good thing? Uh, so they translate all that quote unquote good into a soteriology, whereby they can say, well, how dare you criticize this man? I mean, he's tantamount to being a saint. You know, I, the only thing left to do for MLK is to beatify this man. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I think that's at the root of what people like Gibney are, are, are trying to argue here. And you, when you look at uh, uh, Gibney's use of the word uh, slander in terms of MacArthur, you know, slander is a legal term. Yes. Uh, but the loose, as, as loosely as Gibney uh, apparently defines that term, I could just as well assert that he slandered MacArthur in this 100%. paragraph that we've been talking about earlier. When 100%. he accuses MacArthur of having a, uh, of number one, of uh, of uh, casting these condemnations towards MLK casually uh, with an apparent air of self-righteousness paired with an infantile understanding of neighborly love. Uh, and, and, and so he, he doubles down on the infantile understanding by saying, by suggesting that King uh, has a rudimentary understanding of these uh, biblical doctrines and principles. Now, Mac John MacArthur is going to be 85 years old in, in June of 2024. I, I don't know how, Gib how old Gibbon he is, but he's not 85. No. So the infant here is not John MacArthur. Okay. The infant, just chronologically speaking, the infant here is not John MacArthur. Let me just say that. But based on Gibbon's construct of, uh, of, uh, uh, slander, um, I could just as easily argue that he slandered MacArthur here. But this, this is the arrogance, this is the hubris of social justice warriors who, who, who think that they, they are the only ones carrying the flag of what is right. They're, they're the only one carrying the flag of virtue. They're the only one carrying the flag of anything that's redemptive about human nature. Uh, and what I've found when it comes to MLK it's always an emotional uh, reaction to even to objective criticism by people who pretty much see this man as some type of Moses figure that yeah. has yet to lead us out of yet another mm. promised land. Mm. So, so they can't, they can't stand, they cannot tolerate even a modicum of objective critique. And when I say objective, I mean by, uh, sources that are outside of my own opinion of the man. Right. This is where Virgil and I come in because we have written extensively on MLK, citing sources outside of ourselves. Yes. To establish and support our argument that that MLK was not a Christian in the biblical definition of the word. He was not even a uh, preacher in the biblical definition of the word. Mm. 
He wasn't a pastor in the biblical definition of the word. Mm -hmm. Anyone can stand up and be a good orator in a pulpit. And King was that. He was probably sure. one of the most brilliantly gifted communicators of mm -hmm. the 20th century. Yeah. If, if not all of human history. So, but that doesn't make you a pastor. That doesn't make you a preacher. That makes you a good speaker. That makes right. you an orator. That may make you eloquent. Okay, but that doesn't make you theologically correct. So right. there's a lot of, uh, really, I believe a, there's a, a forensic lens that we need to place upon ML King and look at this man in terms of what the Bible says, as opposed to, you know, whatever um, affinity for or appreciation for someone like uh, Gibbony might have to where he gets all consternated uh, when someone like a John MacArthur uh, has the temerity to say that King was not a Christian. Um, I, I would, I would challenge him to look at King more objectively than he does now. Yes. Well said, brother. Well said. Um, speaking of looking at King objectively, uh, y'all have both written extensively on King. You've done uh, one or more podcasts on King multiple, I believe. Um, so, Virgil, you said a moment ago that King denied many of the fundamental tenets of historical Christianity. Can y'all flesh those out for us? What so when we when we say that Martin Luther King was not a Christian, what what was his theological framework? What did he affirm? What did he deny? Yeah, well, he de he denied the deity of Christ. Uh, he wrote in a in a paper um, during his his time in seminary. He and I'll, I'll quote from the paper. It's in. Uh, you, the, the article is, is uh, you can find it at g3men.org. Uh, it's titled Truth Behind MLK Social Gospel, the truth behind MLK Social Gospel. But this is uh, uh, King writing on the, the humanity and the divinity of Christ. He writes this, quote, the orthodox attempt to explain the divinity of Jesus in terms of an inherent metaphysical substance within him seems to me quite inadequate. To say that Christ is divine in any ontological sense is actually harmful and detrimental so that the orthodox view of the divinity of Christ in my mind is readily denied, end quote. Um, as, it, as it pertains to the resurrection, he says this, King writes this, quote, this doctrine, the resurrection, upon which the Easter faith rests, symbolizes the ultimate Christian conviction that Christ conquered death. From a literary, historical, and philosophical point of view, this doctrine raises many questions. In fact, the external evidence for the authenticity of this doctrine is found wanting, end quote. At right there, if we just stop there, he denies the deity of Christ. Yep. He denies the bodily resurrection of Christ. We can stop there and say, the person who holds those positions is not a Christ follower, is not a Christian. That's right. Now they may they may use they may use Christ. Uh, they may use uh, uh, religious language. They may use they may use Christian language in an effort to support their social justice ends. But from a standpoint of what they believe and whether or not their belief is orthodox and Christian, it absolutely is not. In addition, he denied the virgin birth, the second coming. And a literal hell. I won't go into all of those quotes, but they're, they're all available. This is not, you don't have to do a lot of heavy lifting uh, mm -hmm. in order to, in order to determine uh, what King believed. And, and, you know, the idea, and I know you'll, you'll go here in a bit, but the idea that, that he came to some, you know, clairvoyant uh, uh, definitive difference in his mind or a change of mind or heart uh, in his latter years is absolute folly. It is absolute folly. Uh, no one can produce a shred of evidence to to refute that that King refuted these early claims or that he stood in an orthodox position uh, on these issues in any way, shape or form. And I, I know people go to the the, the kitchen uh, conversation uh, that he had in, in, the, in, in that conversation and in many others, not to mention multiple sermons, which we have access to. If, if anything, King is one of the most documented people that yeah. we have information on <clears throat> yeah, uh, in, right. in, mo in modern times. And, and at no time 
Uh, will you, will anyone, I dare anyone, to find King preaching an orthodox gospel about the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. You will not be able to find it. King's life, I'm sorry, the, the life of Christ, the death of Christ are always metaphors for some yes. social justice plan or initiative. And that's and that's what you have with King. That's right. That's right. Daryl, I want to uh, and, and Virgil, this was not a one-off, right? That you you mentioned this was uh, you quoted from his paper in seminary. So, what year would that have been, roughly, if you know that off the top of your head? We're talking the fifties. I can pull it up and tell 50s, you. Fifties, yeah, er, yeah, early fifties, probably. But um, yep, it was nineteen fifty. The paper was written. Uh, no, yep, yep, uh, nineteen fifty. All right, and uh, Daryl. So, I want to read to show that this was not a one-off. Daryl, I'm going to read a quote. Quotation here from a, a sermon that Martin Luther King Jr. preached entitled A Walk Through the Holy Land Easter, Easter Sunday Sermon delivered at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church on March 29th, 1959. And to Virgil's point here about the crucifixion and resurrection being metaphorical. I'm going to read this and Daryl get your thoughts. King said in his sermon, quote, and, and I'll provide the link below. Everybody can see this. Whatever you believe about the resurrection this morning isn't important the form that you believe in. That is the important thing. The fact of the revelation, re resurrection is something that nobody can refute. That is the important thing. Some people felt, the disciples felt that it was a physical resurrection, that the physical body got up. Then Paul came on the scene who had been trained in Greek philosophy, who knew a little about Greek philosophy. They read a little probably place on others who believed in the immortality of the soul. And he tried to synthesize the Greek doctrine of the immortality of the soul with the Jewish Hebrew doctrine of resurrection. And he talked, as you remember, you read it, about a, a spiritual body. A spiritual body. Whatever form that is important right now. Daryl? Yeah, um, man, I'm speechless. Right. You know, I'm, 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 I'm speechless as the, at this. And, and listen, um, I'm going to try to communicate this in a way that doesn't sound disjointed. But as I'm listening to you, Justin, uh, recite that section, um, I'm thinking about the um, the style of preaching that is is currently and has historically been the case for the majority of predominantly black churches where you hear the same type of sermon that you just quoted from, from King, mm -hmm. that's narratology. Now we know, now I, I say narratology as being distinct from narrative, because we know that one of the genres of, uh, of, of, of biblical content is narrative. There are narratives in the Bible. Uh, so you can describe certain, certain uh, segments of the Bible and sections of the Bible as narrative. But yeah. what I'm talking about is narratology. So, so King was a narratologist. This is why I make a, 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 a distinction between defining King as a preacher versus a storyteller. What you just cited for us was King being the storyteller. When he integrates, uh, and I'm going to get back to the resurrection issue for a second. Sure. But when he when he tries to contextualize his uh, theology of the resurrection uh, by commingling Paul with Plato and making the resurrection a philosophy mm -hmm. and not a theology. Right. See, that's problematic right there. But you don't get today, as we sit here in 2024, in the predominantly Black churches, like those churches that King uh, pastored, you don't get expository preaching so that you can exegete, you can pick apart, and you can examine forensically the various parts of King's belief system that you just cited in those few sentences right there. So that notwithstanding, I just wanted to mention that that's a problem in the black church today. Yeah. You got people in the pulpit who are telling stories. They're not preaching and let alone are they not preaching. They're not preaching expositorily. So that's a fundamental problem right there. So I think we need to start right there. Now, to this matter of where King, as you were reading that, Justin, matter of fact, when you read the first sentence, where King says, whatever you believe about the resurrection this morning isn't important. I'm thinking yes. in my head, stop right there. <laughs> right. 
I'm that, thinking, stop right there. Stop, exactly. Stop right there. Now, King, and listen, what what Virgil and I do on the Just Thinking podcast is we don't do this intentionally, but we make people mad because we we refuse to veer away from the orthodox truth of scripture. We do but we 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 plant our flag on the sufficiency of scripture. But that very first sentence there, Justin, I'm asking myself, if Martin Luther King were here today sitting in on this interview, I would ask him, don't don't you think that sounds a little bit hypocritical now? And re the reason I would ask it is because every everywhere. So he has inter interspersed throughout this sermon that you referenced, uh, Justin, he has it, King has interspersed throughout this sermon. The virtues of Christ as a person. Um. You know how he 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 is he is to be admired. He was a moral example. Um, he was a standard that we should look up to, that we should try to mo model and exemplify and emulate. And then at the same time, you're going to tell me that the, it doesn't matter what you think about the resurrection. So my question is, why did King put any credence whatsoever or validity into Christ at all if he was just a man who, when he died, he stayed dead? Right. Why right. should I pay attention to? Anything the king has to say about Jesus, I don't wrong or right. If if Jesus Christ was just another man who, when he died, he stayed dead. That's right. Of, of, of what of what significance is he to me today? Right. No, he's nothing. Mm -hmm. So when he when King says whatever you believe about the resurrection this morning isn't important, the form that you believe in that isn't the important thing. Now, when something is resurrected, and what 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 are the, the, the form matters. Otherwise, how can you even call it a resurrection? Right. So if if King, uh, if, if, if Christ rather, if King says that the form in which Christ was resurrected isn't important. I mean, Justin, forgive me, brother. But the more we exegete these comments that King made, the more my mind just wants to explode mm -hmm. trying to juxtapose them because he says one thing and then the next thing he says he contradicts the thing that he just said. So, but yeah. again, uh, somebody's going to watch this interview and they're going to say, "Wow, Darren, you you're pretty hard on on King." Well, listen, uh, I'm looking at I, I say some of this in light of First uh, John four three, where John says, "Well, anyone who denies that Jesus Christ came into the flesh, okay, you need to run from them." Amen. All right. Now, to me. Yeah. You can't ignore. So King, on the one hand, he's acknowledging that Jesus came into the flesh, came in into the earth in the flesh. But again, we have to ask the question, why does that matter to you, MLK? Why does it matter that Jesus came in the flesh? You know who else came in the flesh? Muhammad came in the flesh. Mm -hmm. OK, but Muhammad wasn't in, Muhammad wasn't pre-eternal. Right. Muhammad wasn't incarnate. He wasn't right. God in the flesh. So you can't just sit here and say. Well, you know, King, King taught about Jesus. King preached about Jesus. Well, the question is, what did he preach? Which Jesus? Which 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 yes. Jesus are you talking about? That's right. Yes. You know, so I think the more we flesh this out, I think we I think your viewers and your listeners are gonna get a clear picture that the 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 G, that though King talked about Jesus, he did not talk about the Jesus that was the Christ. That's right. That is a very, very crucial point to make here. He talked about Jesus as a good teacher, a good moral example, but he never talked about Jesus as the Christ. A Christ, a Jesus that was not resurrected is not the Christ because he's not a savior. He's right. not a Messiah at that point. There that's is right. so much more we can say about this, brother. But I'll, I'll just right. I'll just wrap up right there. It, it, that's right. And it's, there's a lot of different Jesuses out there, if you will. There's the Mormon Jesus, the Jehovah's Witness Jesus. There's the, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus of Islam. You know, there's a lot of different. And this, you're right. This this Jesus that he preached is just as much a different Jesus as is the Jesus yeah. of Islam. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and this is this is this is the pre this is the precursor, Justin, to the Jesus of Black Liberation Theology is what this is. This is this is the Jesus of James Cones. Uh, this is this right. is this is the precursor Jesus to you know to, to all those who would who would embrace social justice, uh, to those who would embrace critical race theory. This is that Jesus. This is a Jesus who does not save. 
This is a Jesus who does not exist. This is a Jesus who is not real. And so it is, it is, it is clear why MacArthur said, knowing that, that the Jesus of, of Martin Luther King was not the Jesus of the Bible, uh, it was easy for, for, Mar uh, for um, John MacArthur and anyone else who's, who's clear about these issues to say they were not, they were not a Christ follower. Uh, this Jesus that, that they're preaching, that they're teaching, that they're talking about it, is incapable to save. Yeah, that's right. And, and if, yeah, and, and, and Justin, if I could just, just dovetail on what Virgil just said there. Virgil is absolutely right. This is a Jesus of, of, of today speaking contemporarily, Raphael Warnock, who, who <laughs> yes. ironically, right, pa now currently pastors Ebenezer Baptist Church in, uh, in downtown Atlanta. This is, this is the, uh, the Jesus of, of Kelly Brown Douglas, who wrote a book titled The Black Christ. Uh, you know, no, Virgil's exactly right. So they, they, in, in Black Liberation Theology, you rob Jesus of uh, so many of his um, incommunicable attributes as God in the flesh, as the second person of the Trinity. You have to strip him of those things and reduce him down uh, to mm -hmm. a rebel, a revolutionary. So you yes. take him out of the of, of his role as redeemer of mm -hmm. all sinners, and then he and then you strip him of that uh, that divinity, and then you make him uh, uh, like, like I like to say you 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 uh, you take his divinity off, you put on humanity, and then that's all that he wears. He only wears his humanity, so that he's yeah. a revolutionary, he's a rebel, but he is never a redeemer. And he in Black Liberation theology, he can't be a redeemer because in Black the Black liberation theology, salvation from your sins is not the salvation that they're trying to achieve. They're trying to achieve economic liberation, uh, right. political libera uh, liberation, uh, uh, po uh, political power, corporate power, and things of that nature, which we're now seeing uh, with the uh, expansion of CRT, especially as it relates to DEI. Right. Uh, so Virgil's ex exactly right. The Jesus of, this, of the social justice movement to which King himself, in a paper he wrote while a student at Crozier Theological Seminary, the paper was titled Preaching Ministry, said, and I quote, I am a staunch advocate of the social gospel, unquote. King confessed to be an advocate of the social gospel. But in the social gospel, uh, Jesus is none of who he himself said he is. That's no. right. That's right. And, and Daryl, to that point, to that exact point, I want to read another little excerpt from this same sermon. Um, judging by the uh, transcript here, if he had been preaching, well, uh, probably just a, a minute or two after the first section. So he continues with this, per to your point. So this morning, let us not be disillusioned. Let us not lose faith. So often we've been crucified. We've been buried in numerous graves, graves of economic insecurity, the graves of exploitation, the grave of oppression. We've watched justice trample over the truth crucified. And I'm here to tell you this morning, Easter reminds us that it won't be like that all the way. It reminds us that God has a light that can shine amid all the darkness, and he can bring all of the light of day out of the darkness of the midnight. <laughs> See, take it see, away. That, that that would make a good Hallmark movie on Lifetime. That script, <laughs> that, that would that would fit really nicely into one of those little romance movies on on on, on the on the Lifetime channel. Yeah. Uh, but that's not that's not theology. That's not biblical theology. What what you just read there. I mean, uh, again, so so what you have in that section there that you just read, uh, Justin, is uh, you've got eisegesis going on. Mm -hmm. You've got narratology going on you got uh, a, a little homiletical uh, uh style, stylization going on there mm -hmm. um but but again um, as i'm looking at the same quote where king says and so this morning let us not be disillusioned let us not lose faith i mean lose faith i mean what is your what or who is your faith in? Faith in, in you know yeah i mean if jesus if right. jesus isn't resurrected and, and and king's already said that just go ahead and discount uh, the the the, um, the resurrection for uh, with respect to what form Jesus took or whether you even think it happened. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and discount all that. 
Uh, so, so who, when he says don't don't lose faith, uh, faith in what? Faith in who? You know. Right. So now you've got the the narratology going on here, where he says, you know, so often we've been crucified, we've been buried in numerous graves: the grave of economic insecurity, the grave of exploitation, the grave of oppression. Matter of fact, King used those same graves to support uh, uh, Planned Parenthood, by the way. Because mm -hmm. it was the grave mm -hmm. of economic insecurity that he used as an excuse for why to young black babies. women should murder their babies. Yep. So, so much so that Planned Parenthood awarded him their highest honor in 1966, the Margaret Sanger Award. So now mm -hmm. you've got all these metaphors. But this, the thing King doesn't realize, if economic security was a grave, uh, you see graves you don't get out of. Right. Graves you don't you don't get out of. Um, I, I would rather King, in, in, instead of using all these uh, irrelevant metaphors, I would encourage I would have encouraged him to read. And I would encourage your listeners and viewers to read, Justin, go out and find Frederick Douglass's speech titled Self-Made Men, where Douglass, who was a slave, Douglass, who was a slave, right. but 90 some odd years before uh, King was assassinated, uh, would have would have talked about how to get yourself out of these graves, graves being in air quotes, the grave of economic security, the grave of exploitation, the grave of, of, of oppression. But apart from that sort of sociological, uh, linguistic gymnastics, there is nothing, again, there is nothing biblical in here at all. Oh, as, as In terms of, number one, why are you even here at church listening to the sermon? Why are you even here? Right. Why should you even be here listening to me if all you're going to take away from this is again oh well i i guess i, I just have to you know i just got to keep plowing away on my own you know yeah. i got to keep plowing away on my own uh because king has got you so focused this this sermon right here to tell you the truth justin was the first uh living your best life now this 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 it was this sermon right here because he's telling these people well you're not yeah, living your best life you're not yes. living your best life, but there's yeah. there's a light out there. Okay, Great well, what is it? What is it? Right. Everything's about the here and now. It's, it's the here and now. It's all temporal. Yes. It's all temporal, but that's what v, that's what Virgil was alluding to earlier. This is the salvation right. that uh, this is the soteriology that Black liberation theology teaches. That's it's, right. You know, it, it, what is your what is your what is your material quality of life look like? Yep, that's right. No, no emphasis on the eternal. No, like everything's about None. the here and now. Nothing about the soul. Nothing about the state of your soul. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Is, uh, nothing about you being in a right relationship with the Lord. Nothing at all about when you take your last breath. Uh, wh where you would you go to heaven? No, no, nothing. Nothing. Ab nothing about why. Nothing about Matthew one twenty one, where the angel said that you will call his name Jesus, for right. he will save his people from their sins. Right. Nothing about that. Right. This, this Jesus uh, in some ephemeral uh, way saves people from economic, I mean, the, the graves of economic oppression and, and injustice and economic insecurity and, you know, all those graves, but not sin, not right. sin. Right. The, 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 the I think what, what you're witnessing even in this, is that people are the, the those who are listening to him uh, have have bought hook line and sinker that that their their way their road to salvation is through is through Dr. King okay uh, they can't think that it's through Jesus Christ because they've not been presented a biblical Jesus mm -hmm. uh, they are drunk on homiletics uh, and and have no desire to hear proper biblical hermeneutics I I could even I could even in my mind hear King saying saying this. And, and that whole, and so this morning, let us not be disillusioned. Let us not lose our faith. So often we've been crucified. And see, I can, I can hear, I can, I, I can see people because, because the, 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 the current day idiots, and I, and I, and I, and I don't use that word lightly, who get out and do this same fake homiletic. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it, it's it's cosplay, uh, is yeah. what it is. It's it, it's it's nineteen sixties cosplay today that that a lot of these leaders engage in in an effort to sound like King, with the hope that their words can move the masses in the same way that Kings did. 
because none of those people were actually connected to proper biblical hermeneutics. They were drunk on homiletics, the yes. manner in which the style in which the, 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 the way in which someone presented words and, 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 and were uh, and orated what they were going to share. Uh, and, and if that sound, if that sounds like King, then almost a lot of blacks, and it's sad to say, have a Pavlovian response mm. to this kind of kind of kind of sound and intonation, yeah. uh, and so they be, they begin they begin to follow. But again, I, I going going back to 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 Justin Gibney, uh, I, I think his response was Pavlovian as well. Uh, in yeah. that, because if you think about the the two two and a half minute. Um, stretch of, of, of interview that you shared with us, I'd say less than 30 seconds of it actually mentioned King, yeah. right? Less right. than 30 seconds of it. Right. And a sentence that he objected to required him grabbing his laptop and writing a, you know, a thousand word uh, uh, article uh, that gets published with, with, so, with, some, with someone very foolish who 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 did not do a good job editing his work, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 exposing their own agenda, uh, and allowed it to get published. No 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 good editor would allow language like like the like well the thing well V, v let's used. remember let's remember now who's running CT. I oh I know I know let's let's, let's remember so <laughs> there's that there, yeah. there is that <laughs> yeah um. Yeah, so the, the the Jesus that did not bodily come out of the tomb is if Jesus has not been raised, we are still dead in our, dead sins, in our sins, right? Absolutely. So we got if, listen. If Jesus hasn't been raised, we've got we've got nothing. We've got nothing, nothing. And, and Justin, we're, really, when you break it down to its uh, most fundamental elements, the reason we're on this interview right now is because Jesus has been raised from the dead. Absolutely. And the reason, what I mean by that is that the truth matters here. We're not we're not just talking about. Really, when you look at it from a uh, from the the standpoint of uh, uh, biblical apologetics, the, the conversation we're having around Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. matters not necessarily because not in the in the small in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter uh, uh, what King believed with respect to simply criticizing King and critiquing King, but in a broader spectrum, what King taught. And the fact that so many people today still subscribe to what King taught matters because of the resurrection. King taught another gospel as it relates to the resurrection. Now, right. th there, there are other, other uh, examples of, of him teaching a different gospel as well. But to your point, Justin, when you cite that text that, of scripture that you just did, if Christ is not raised from the dead, we are, Paul, Paul says, we are to be pitied even yes. among Yes. Other false others who believe false religions. Yeah, we're true. even to be pitied more than them. Yeah. So the resurrection matters. What King taught about the resurrection matters, right. not because of King, but because the resurrection matters. So for him yes. to say that the, you can believe whatever you want about the resurrection, I mean that's that's ridiculous. That's absurd. Yeah. That's right. Um, and I do want to say one last thing about uh, the CT article uh, by. Uh, Justin Gibney. Gibney in that article says this, I'm quoting Gibney. He says, the details of King's theological journey have never been the principal concern of his detractors, unquote. Now yeah. I, wanna, I wanna counter that by saying, mm -hmm. to the extent that Virgil and I have written so extensively about King, in our writings, all we've done is to critique his theology. Yes, that's all we've that's right. ever done. Yeah, yeah. We have never written a single syllable right. about King's personal life or anything outside of his theological beliefs. Every single word we've ever written, every single word we've ever spoken, yeah, in critiquing right. Dr. King has literally only been to critique his theology. So what is, is wrong on that point? Yeah, and one yeah. of the things one one of the things, Daryl, that that uh, you know. I, I get pushed back. I did a, I did a, when I, when I did this article this year and kind of tightened up some older writings that I, that, I mean, you, 
you you've read you've read the stuff I've written. You mm -hmm. I I send stuff to you for you to edit. You know, we yep. we, we you send yep. stuff to me for me to look right. at. You mm -hmm. know, we're we're both checking each other's work and, and we have editors in our in our own perspective uh, areas of uh you know where where we work and such who, who look at our who look at our stuff where it's factual content, it's theological acumen, all of those things. And so any article that you see we've put up, it's gone through a pretty intense grid mm -hmm. uh, before it actually before it's actually posted or goes up. I, that with that said, more times than not, the challenge that we get back or the pushback that we get is always, well, you, you didn't talk about, you know, Whitfield or Edwards and, the, and their slavery, or you didn't talk about, you know, this. And, and my, my, my response to that is, is this, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm sure Daryl, <laughs> I can almost imagine what Daryl's going to say, but I, <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let him, I'll let him, I'll let him say that. Uh, I, I, my, my, my thing on that is this. Um, I'm not even looking at if if Edwards or Whitfield had some errant theology, some some unorthodox belief that they were positing as Christian. I, I'd have the same visceral response that that needs to be a, a, addressed and say, OK, Whitfield got this wrong theologically or, or you know, or, or Edwards got this wrong theologically. I, I, I'm not we can talk about the 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 you know the issue of slavery or or what or or what have you uh right now i'm simply dealing with a theological matter and and neither of those men are are in error theologically speaking right so so that's that's the that's the first thing the second thing is simply because i critique king does not require me to critique any other person of any other ethnic hue that, that is not that is not a requirement i can i can i can look at the the man who said what he said or did what he did on the on the merit of their own words and their own writing? Examine that against the backdrop of Scripture. There's not some some biblical requirement. You did a black guy, but you know what's next? You got to do a white guy. There's no there's no there's, if someone give me book chapter verse where that's found, you know I'm happy I'm happy to take a look at that. But 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 the reality is at the end of the day, you can critique King in his own in his own you know on, on his own basis. Based upon theology, uh, and 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 that be it. Finally, I, and I and I shared this in a in a response that I gave to someone. You know, I, I think if Edwards or Whitfield had a day that the entire uh, country stopped what they were doing for the purpose of acknowledging their holiday, uh, and there were some and there were some moral issues uh, that needed to be addressed, I think I think it's I think it's fair game. Right. I think I think I think it'd be fair game. You, I'd have the same level of intensity uh, to examine their lives. At the end of the day, there's there's no requirement here. And all all anyone is doing when they bring up those kinds of charges or claims is exposing their own ethnic idolatry is what they're doing. They're exposing the fact that they have an idol, that that idol is melanin and that they are bowing the knee to that idol. Yeah. And so no true. one of a certain level of melanin is able to be critiqued because they get a pass because of the fact that they're that they're black. That's kind of how that ends up working. And you, you know, uh, V, whenever I hear somebody try to, they go that whole, but, but what about ism route? That whole what right. about ism route? Uh, they want to talk about Edwards. They want to talk about Whitfield. I'm like, no, no, let's not, let's not talk about them. Let's talk about the slave owners in your line of family. Let's talk about your ancestors who were slave, because I guarantee you, you had some. Yeah, I guarantee you, you have some. So no, let's not talk about Edwards and Whitfield and the fact that they own slave. Let's talk about the people in your own ancestry who own slave. Maybe in my own ancestry who own slaves, who I know for a fact own slaves. Let's just bring that home. Uh, let, let's not let's not go back two hundred years. Say it let's again. Bring it home there, today. You, you have some people in your in your lineage back there. With oh, that share your same melanin level who I, own slaves? Who own slaves? Yes, I do. Absolutely. I've got. I can name you one. Anderson Jewell. My great grandfather, my great great grandfather, Anderson Jewell, owned 260 slaves on a plantation in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Wow. He was a mulatto, so he was mixed. Yeah. Owned 260 slaves on a wow. plantation in North Carolina. Okay. So, I mean, you, you talk about uh, 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 the whataboutism, but Virgil's absolutely right. That's the instinctive reaction that we get. They yeah. want to bring up Edwards, they want to bring up Whitfield. No, let's talk about the slave owners in your family. Right. Let's let's because I promise it's like, like it's like Sonny Hosted on The View, who 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 was shocked. I don't know why she was shocked <laughs> when she found out that her some of her ancestors actually owned slaves. Mm -hmm. And when when you look at this in the context of Acts seventeen twenty six, yes, 
which clearly says that every last one of us yes. is descended from one man. Yes. You think that out logically that we're if we're all if we're all descended from Adam, at some point in time, every single person on this earth probably can, can trace uh, in, in their genealogy, uh, at least contemporarily, to to someone who was either a slave or a slave owner, and and, and, and we we don't and, and we and we we don't we don't even want to deal with 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 the issue of slavery. I can promise you, no one yeah, bro, wants. We to don't. Have they don't want to talk about that. They, they, I promise you, no no one wants to have a conversation with Daryl or or me on the on that subject altogether. That's a that's a that's they a non they, they do that's not a non-starter. Want to go they don't want to go there. I promise you. I would. I would love to see uh, the two of you and uh, Dwight McKissick have a conversation about that. that so, brothers, uh, let's go back to Gibney's article here because he makes, and, and Virgil, you touched on it a little bit, but I want to flesh it out a little bit more. He says, uh, MacArthur may take issue with some of King's early theological work, which did question Christian doctrine. However, as Mika Edmondson, himself a pastor and systematic theologian, insightfully explained, quote, King's early seminary papers don't reflect his final fully formed theology. Not unlike, not unlike Abraham Kuyper and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, King wrestled with theological liberalism, but later seemed to, quote, shift back toward the faith of his conservative black Baptist upbringing. So, uh, you know, you have to you have to acknowledge that King clearly wrote against the basic elements of the gospel. Uh, so to to kind of rescue King amongst at least for theologically conservative evangelicals, whatever that means, uh, to rescue him from himself, they've got to say that he returned to a more orthodox, conservative, biblical stance and understanding of Christianity. Is that true well I, the, i'll start here where's the evidence like I, every listen every everything that every statement that i made in my article i backed with a link directly to an original source so everything i stated in the way of a in the in the, in the way of a, a a charge in the way of a statement uh something i posited an idea i connected the the, the dots back to an original source you can you can posit a whole bunch of ideas. You could make claims all you want, but it's not a, it's attached to nothing. And and if and and if, if all they have is that is the the kitchen conversation, that that is that is vacuous. There is right. there is no there there. There's right. no there's no repudiation of of previous doctrines regarding uh, the, the deity of Christ, regarding the resurrection of Christ. There, there's 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 no gospel. Uh, there, there's no right. proclamation. There, there's no advance of the gospel proclamation to say, oh, he now believes in a biblical gospel that he's presenting in this instance. What King is doing is what he's always done. He's borrowed biblical language when it suits him. Uh, he's put that before people that he knows wants to hear it. And, and, and even in this, even in this instance, it does not, it still does not connect the dots solidly to a biblical gospel it doesn't it, it's it's not it's not there's no there there right you know uh justin you're you're familiar you're extremely familiar with the work that virgil and i do on the just thinking podcast and one of the things that virgil and i take pride in and, and which is one of the reasons why we don't put out episodes more frequently that than we do is because we spend so much time doing yeah. research that's right we spend right. so much time doing research and homework and citing our sources uh, if you if if your viewers were to see uh, the notes from an average uh, episode of the Just Thinking podcast, you would probably you would probably see uh, close to thirty pages of single page notes, single single space notes with close to forty to fifty citations, forty yeah. to fifty footnotes. Right. Um, we we take accuracy very seriously on the Just Thinking podcast. Uh, we don't cut corners. We don't take shortcuts. So when I look at what uh, uh, Mr. Gibbony said here at, towards the end of his article in uh, Christianity Today, uh, where he cites Mika Edmondson, uh, and then he says that Mika Edmondson insightfully explained 
and that word explained is hyperlinked to a Twitter post. Uh huh. That's see, I thought I, I found it interesting that Gibney didn't say. He said, as uh, Mika Edmondson insightfully explained. He didn't say as Mika Edmondson insightfully documented. He didn't say that. Right. He, didn't, he didn't link to a document a, a, a documentation that uh, that supports or endorses or affirms his uh, suggestion, and I use that word lightly, that King changed his theology in his later years. There is nothing that documents that. Um, right. Uh, that that King that King changed his his Christology, his theology, or his uh, soteriology. There's nothing. Daryl, 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 I got to I've got to interrupt you here. Go ahead, V. And here's why. You've written for a number of publications, brother, you, you, in journals, uh, in, in different in different periodicals. You've written blog articles. Everything from from a, a journal, which is which is you know something something very very you know in depth, theologically dense, to a blog article, and even in the lightest form blog article, the places that you and I both have submitted our articles to would never, never let you or I get away with making a statement like that, mm -mm. attaching it to some no. random tweet. No. No. And, and and acting as if that was documentation no. mm -mm. for the purpose of, of making our case. They wouldn't no. do that. An Never. editor would look at that, laugh, and go, you need to go find an original mm -hmm. source mm -hmm. and come back. Now, had they used had they used the tweet to say this person said this, that's one thing. That's one thing. But if they're trying to make a case and are using the are using this tweet to make a case. It's not documented proof of anything, anything. at all. And, and, and no good editor, again, I, I apologize for the interruption. No good editor, no, no. I, have to, I have to make this point. No good editor would allow that to happen. No, 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 would, no, no, no good theologian either. No good systematic theologian either. Who, who, <laughs> right. who, uh, who given me, uh, describes Mika Edmondson as a, uh, quoting himself, speaking of Edmondson, given he said himself a pastor and systematic theologian. If he's a systematic theologian, in, intrinsic with the word systematic is preciseness. Mm -hmm. You want to be precise. You want to be accurate. A, a, mm -hmm. a, because a systematic theolo theologian, be, being precise, accurate, and thorough is inherent to that, to that label, to that, to that, to that title. Yeah. Uh, so, but referring, but, but linking to a tweet, where someone is, is 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 basically offering an opinion, essentially, with no objective um, second or third party um, confirmation of what you're suggesting, that's not uh, that's not documentation. No, no. That that's that's not that would not stand up in court, as they say. That's that right. would not stand up in court. Um, but that's that's the that's the mindset that Virgil and I have. In our preparation on the Just Thinking podcast, we will not get behind those microphones and say anything that we cannot cite or support outside of ourselves. We're not going to do it. And and no, no for, for, forget a, a good writer or a good editor, a good systematic theologian would never let someone else say that about them if it can't be asserted in some other secondary tertiary way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not going to happen. That's right. That's right. And and two to that point, if King did return, or if he did in his later years embrace a biblical gospel, then then real repentance bears real fruit, right? He would have come out. And Virgil, you said it earlier. He's one of the most documented individuals in the modern era. If he had truly gone from darkness to light. If he had truly been granted faith and repentance, he clearly was not a Christian um, by denying all the fundamentals of the faith. If he somehow later did become a Christian in his later years and embraced the true gospel, then he would have come out and said that. He would have said, look, I've been preaching a false gospel for all of these years, I've been preaching a different Jesus. I was deceived, and in so doing, I, I was deceiving even you. And I've brought reproach upon the name of Christ. And I realize now the bodily resurrection, what you believe, but it actually does matter 
what what form the resurrection comes in. It actually matters a lot. It matters eternally. And he would have said, I'm now born again. I've been brought to life. I, I Old things passed away. All things are made new. He would have made that very clear, and yet not one syllable of mm-hmm. evidence that that ever took place. No, what you have, what you have is is a lot of evidence to the contrary. Uh, again, and, and and we we don't spend a ton of time on this, uh, but given his lifestyle, uh, given what what others have said about him, the way that he the way that he lived, the the, the womanizing, all of those kinds of things, th- there's there's a yeah. ton of evidence to the contrary right. uh, that can actually be brought to bear. Uh, like I said, D- Daryl and I don't spend a lot of time discussing those matters. Uh, those will see the light of the day when they do. And, and most of those uh, related issues, people, unfortunately, are going to dismiss anyway. But they do, the, but they do serve as evidence of, yeah. uh, of, a, of a life that, that is not regenerate. That's for sure. That's right, Virgil. And, and, and since you brought it up, I, I want us to bring this up because it is germane to this discussion. Um, the sexual immorality and promiscuity of Martin Luther King Jr. is is beyond dispute. I mean, it's not even debatable. Maybe the degree to which is somewhat debatable, but um, one of his closest friends was a man by the name of Ralph Abernathy. He was a fellow civil rights leader with Martin Luther King. He was King's, probably his closest friend, most trusted confidant. Um, Their children referred to you know, the other man's father as uncle, you know, uncle Martin or uncle Ralph, you know, these were close personal friends. Uh, they, they labored together and Ralph Abernathy, he wrote an autobiography on his close personal friend titled, and the walls came tumbling down in which he says that Martin Luther King Jr. Had many adulterous affairs. Uh, in fact, he says that the night Martin Luther King Jr.'s last night on earth was spent in the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. And he says of his dearest friend for his entire adult life, he says that there were two women spending the night with King in that hotel room, neither of which was his wife. And one of the women, one of the women was the First black woman state senator from the state of Kentucky. Her name was Georgia Davis Powers. And she herself openly admitted, I think she died maybe about, uh, I think 2012, if I remember correctly. But she she herself admits, openly admitted to being one of those two women who spent the night with King, his last night on earth in the Lorraine Motel. Now, uh, and then there's apparently, we talked about this before we started recording, there are FBI tapes that are scheduled to be released uh, in the year 2027 that uh, document if 1% of what I'm reading about these tapes is true, King was not only guilty of prolific sexual immorality, but to the point of criminal sexual immorality. Now, yeah. What 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 are y'all's thoughts on that? Yeah, that, I mean the the, the I, one when I hear that when I hear anything like that, my heart absolutely breaks. Absolutely, uh, for for uh, e- everyone involved, the, 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 for, for King uh, to be engaged in that, for those who were involved, for those who were around him that knew, my, it, my heart breaks when I hear that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and regardless of who, regardless of the situation or circumstance, absolutely breaks. S- secondarily, and sadly, unfortunately, this kind of information is, is not unknown. Uh, it's, it's clear. Uh, the, the challenge is most people, like those who stand with, with, with Gibbony, uh, ignore it. It's irrelevant. Uh, they, they find it absolutely irrelevant. For them, this is not germane. Uh, it's, 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 not, it's neither germane to, uh, to, to, to uh, King's uh, claim to, of, of being a Christian, uh, nor is it germane uh, or, or clouds any of, of what they believe uh, good King did. Uh, they, they, you know, his abuse of Christianity and Christian language and Christian ideas for the purpose of his own, of, of, of the promotion of, of his own uh, social agenda, 
Uh, all, all, all that that is all that matters at the end of the day for for the vast majority of these people. So while it, it I think it is important to look at to examine most who carry water for King will ignore it. Uh, yeah. Won't you know they they won't they won't they'll pay little to no attention to it. Uh, and believe anyone who brings it up to be racist uh, or to have right. some some kind of an of, of agenda. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I, would, I would just add to what Virgil just said. I think uh, we haven't talked about this uh, thus far in the conversation, but I think um, uh, notwithstanding uh, the uh, allegations of uh, Martin Luther King's uh, uh, um, faithfulness to his, his wife or unfaithfulness to his wife, I should say, um, his, um, uh, his lifestyle uh, when he was not uh, in front of the public, um, you, you know, he, one of his closest confidants was an open homosexual, mm -hmm. uh, Bayard Rustin, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, the man who organized the march on Washington. He he was he was one of Dr. King's uh, closest uh, confidants. Um, but but I think uh, and I, you know I can't uh, un unlike uh, uh, some who want to link to a tweet. Um, I can't sit here and say that I've read uh, uh, Dr. Abernathy's book, uh, being an a Atlanta native, I'm familiar with Ralph David Abernathy. Uh, you, you, you know, growing up in Atlanta, you get that, you get all that history. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I was a, a, a child in school in the 70s. So, so you, you get that history of uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. King, Ebenezer Baptist Church and the uh, Civil Rights March, uh, Civil Rights Movement rather, the uh, March on Washington, and you get all of that. So I'm from, very familiar with that just from being born and raised in Atlanta. Uh, but uh, um, uh, I, I want to use this sort of as a, a metaphor of what Virgil's just talking about, how when it comes to uh, uh, people like Gibbony, uh, they, they like to separate uh, certain things about King and just sort of toss those aside as if they're just totally irrelevant. Uh, I'm not a chef. I'm not a baker. Uh, but um, as I'm listening to Virgil, I'm thinking about how have, I've, I've never tried this, but I've seen on, on, on cooking shows and whatnot, when you can crack an egg and you try to separate the yolk from the egg white. Mm -hmm. th that's what Virgil's talking about, what people like Gibbony like to do when it comes to King. They try to separate the yolk from the egg, wh egg white. Yeah. Uh, but you can't. It's, st it's still all the same egg. Right. It's still all the same egg. You can try to separate the yolk if you want to and then separate the egg white, but it's still the same egg. Uh, right. and, 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 and it, what's really sad here, and I, and I concur with both of you guys, my, my heart breaks when I, listen, when I, when I listened to you a few minutes ago, just sort of run through that, uh, Justin, I wasn't over here giggling and sneering. I mean, that was, that was heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, but see here, here's the thing when, when it comes to uh, uh, idols and idolatry, uh, what's, what's ironic is we won't, uh, we won't accept because we're we're so uh, as congenital sinners we're so inherently um, enemies of God that we won't accept God's loving, uh, uh, merciful, graceful boundaries for our lives. We won't live by those. While at the same time, for our idols, though, we'll accept the worst in them because because yeah. they're our idols. Because we don't want our idols. And our idolatry of those idols challenged. We don't want them challenged. So right. we'll accept even the sin or the alleged sin of a Martin Luther King if this man uh, is so um, so a part of who I identify myself with that I can just let all of his, uh, no matter how egregious they are, I can let all of his sins go. No matter how egregious they were, no matter who they hurt, no matter who they harm, uh, or even if the harm was done to himself. Uh, but see, here's the thing, though, and this goes full circle back to my earlier comments about most Christians have a, a moralistic Christianity. It is not a monogistic Christianity. So they think with King that he had it within himself if he did uh, change his theology or his Christianity later on, that he would have been empowered in himself to do that. You see, as, some, as if some epiphany came upon him, uh -huh. whereas we know that uh, 
you only come to the light of the truth if God draws you to it. God has to bring you to it. Mm -hmm. Salvation right. is not of yourself. Um, right. Regeneration is not of yourself. That's right. But people who argue that King came to a different, although we have no documentation of this, that King's uh, theology, his Christology matured in his later years as if he himself would have been able to come to that realization. Well, that's erroneous, enough, but that's those people who think Salvation is by works, that, that we, right. man can do enough good works to endear himself to God, uh, to whereas to choose salvation, to choose to be saved, and then again, mm -hmm. to say in and of themselves, oh, yeah, I, I was wrong about that. I was wrong about that. Hey, I read this book, and all of a sudden, my heart changed. No, that's not how this works. That's right. You know, but they don't want to put the work in. You know, y'all y'all really need to do more than just read letters from a Birmingham jail. You the, the, pe pe people who, people who get behind King. Yeah, yeah, I've read. You should read his letters from Birmingham jail. Well, have you read his papers that he wrote when he was in seminary? Mm -hmm. That that the, the papers yeah. King wrote in, at Crozier Theological Seminary are the same represent the same Martin Luther King all the way up to when he was assassinated in 1968. That's right. That's right. And the, you're exactly right. There, there's no evidence that he ever embraced a biblical gospel. If he had, he would have done what we've been talking about. He would have made that known. You can't go from being dead in sins to alive in Christ and not tell people about it. But see, King never taught. The thing about King never taught. Never, King never had a homardiology. No, he never had a doctrine of sin. He never doctrine had of sin to throw out a. Uh, that's a so, big so he, doctrine. He of never sin. had a doctrine of sin, so he never had a doctrine of sin. So that, which, which again, you, I can't find it. And I listen. We study. Burge and I have studied King profusely. We can I can't find a single sermon where he preached on repentance and confession of sin. Not one. Not one. That that is not to be missed. Okay, not one. I can't find a single one. Sermon. I can't find a single one. I've stu I've studied him for years. I've not been able to find one. Yeah, that you know that that's the open and shut case right there. That you, you if he truly embraced a biblical gospel towards the end of his life, he would have made that known. That that would have been his all consuming compassion, uh, not compassion to preach the gospel, and and he yeah. didn't do it. He never did it, and the immorality, the the apparently prolific if not even criminal sexual immorality, that is just, I mean, that's what you expect from uh, uh, a, a lost person. Uh, that's what, you know, lost people do what lost people do. It, as being unregenerate, he did not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, there is no restraint on his flesh, right? And so that's just kind of what you would expect from someone who's unregenerate. Just, Justin, can I say one more thing real quick? I want to harken back to the sermon that we were talking about earlier in our conversation, uh, a walk through um, a walk through the Holy Land. Yep. This is King's Easter Sunday sermon that he sermon that he delivered at Dexter Memorial Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, March 29, 1959. Now, I want you to tell me I'm going to play this game that Virgil likes to play a lot. He calls it who said it first. OK, who said okay. who said it first? I, I want I want your audience to, to to guess who said this. Was it Martin Luther King or was it Joel Osteen? Now, let me let me let me read from that sermon, and I want you to guess: was this MLK or was this uh, Joel Osteen? From that sermon, King says this. He says, "So often we come to those points when it gets dark. It seems that the light of life is out. The sunlight of day moves out of our being and out of the rest of our faith. We get disillusioned and confused and give up in despair. But if we will only look around, we will discover that God has another light." And when we discover that, we need never walk in darkness. I've seen this so often in my own personal experience. But when it was dark and tragedy around, seemed that the light of day had gone out, darkness all around, and sunlight passing away, I got enough strength in my being to turn around and only to discover that God had another light. Now, who said that? Was that Martin Luther King or was that Joel Osteen? <laughs> You could flip it either way. You could flip it. That's exactly my point. You yep. could flip that either way. Either way, it'd be a jump ball. I could, I could hear, I could almost hear that in Joel Osteen's <laughs> I mean, accent, actually. But that's from MLK. 
but yeah, wow. it would it would fit perfectly with with Osteen. That's right. That's that's right. Um, so guys, to to, to wrap this up a little bit, um, going back to Gibney's article, he says, "quote." Inasmuch as MacArthur or any others reject or even obstruct the American church's efforts to repent of injustice, imitate Christ, and heal our country's racism, sexism, and economic inequalities, they will only find themselves fighting against God. Now, a uh, full article, if you want to read it, he is playing off of Gamaliel's advice in Acts mm -hmm. chapter 5, which Gamaliel's advice was bad advice because Gamaliel was not even a believer and it doesn't pass a common sense test, but that's another program. So, um, I mean, that right there, it, it reflects his social justice, yeah. social gospel bent, does it yeah. not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it does. He ends the article that way. I mean, it, it, at the end of the article, he connects uh, social justice with the gospel, right? And so, mm -hmm. it, it you know, from start to finish, he kind of lays out his his case and 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 shows you his cards, uh, and you know, lays the charge to uh, MacArthur that that he's the one being slanderous when when actually uh, not at all the case. In fact, the the, the everything we've laid out in, in, in our conversation here uh, is is evidential proof. Uh, of of why MacArthur made the statement that he did, uh, it, it it it's it follows logic, it follows reason, it follows the evidence, um, you know, and and it's substantiated by King's own words, uh, yeah. and so you know, at, at the at the end of the day, I think this 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 article, you know, and and those who who published it, uh, it's telling, it absolutely is telling what what they're doing, why they're doing it. Uh, all of it to 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 raise up King, um, rather rather than the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who is Jesus the yeah. Christ. Amen, amen. And what what's at stake here is that to to portray King as a genuine Christian who preached the real gospel. You're cheapening the gospel. You're pre you're preaching to people a a different Jesus, a different gospel, and a different gospel does not save. So we're, we're talking about matters of eternity here. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I'm, I'm so happy to hear you emphasize that, uh, Justin, because listen, souls are at stake. The truth is at stake yes. here. We're not, we're not just talking about a, man, a man's perspective on who Jesus is. We're not talking about just, you know, siloed opinions here. This man, uh, uh, King, here we are, um, almost, uh, you know, almost 60 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, after he was uh, murdered, right. uh, people are still leveraging his theology to uh, not only uh, develop their own theology, but to also continue to expand on, on an already false theology, which is liberation theology. That 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 liberation theology still has legs. Liberation theology in the in the American church, uh, you know, we're going on over 100 years now. Of, of 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 this poison penetrating the evangelical church, but it is continuing to do particular damage in churches with predominantly black congregations. Uh, yes. Because now a lot of those a lot of those churches, a lot of the pulpits, especially in urban, large metropolitan areas uh, like Atlanta, where Virgil is, you've got young uh, pastors, young men rather, who who. Uh, Many of them, uh, not that you have to be, but many of them not seminary trained. They're, 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 they've got their pulses on a certain bit of the culture with uh, BLM, with the whole George Floyd thing. With the, they, they buy into DEI. Uh, they, buy, they buy into critical race theory. Uh, in other words, they're woke. Uh, so they, they right. either are uh, put into these pulpits or they may start their own church. You know, and 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 uh, and lead their own congregations down this same heretical path, which is rooted in uh, speaking of black liberation theology, is rooted in env envy, jealousy, mm -hmm. covetousness, hatred, and sinful partiality. I could probably go on, yeah. uh, but the black liberation theology, and I studied this at, at Princeton. This is why I went there. Uh, at Princeton Theological Seminary to study the Black Liberation Theology of James Cone. You have now, starting with Cone, you're probably on your fourth generation within Black communities 
of people, young people who are swallowing up the poison of black liberation theology and not realizing that the the uh, salvation that James Cone preached is not the salvation of the Bible. It is not the gospel. Souls are at stake here. This is why it matters what Dr. King taught. It's That's because true. what he taught in terms of being an unbiblical, false, totally another gospel is going to send people to hell. That's right. That's, that's right. why King. That's why this conversation matters. Ultimately, that's right. That's right. We're we're not we're not having this conversation just to, you know, just to um, you know diminish Martin Luther King Jr. in people's eyes. That's not what any of us is motivated by. We're motivated by the truth, and we're we're in we're energized by the real gospel, the true gospel, not a false gospel. Listen, I would I would have this same conversation if we were here talking about the modalism of T.D. Jakes or yep. the prosperity gospel of a uh, uh, who's who's my guy Creflo, Creflo Dollar Creflo yep. Dollar I, yep. I, I I I wouldn't care who I wouldn't care who it was yep. if 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 the person's in error we need to have that conversation right and and the, and the and the difference in the difference here between you know for those who would say oh well okay y'all y'all talked about King and. And what he did, you know, in the bedroom with someone who was not his wife, but you didn't talk about the, the slavery of, of Edwards and, and, you know, Whitlock. The, the, the issue at the Whitfield. end of the day, at Whitfield, I'm sorry, <laughs> Whitlock. <laughs> and, the, and the difference, and we don't even go into why I said that. The difference here at the end of the day has everything to do with who, who preached the right gospel. What, what, what was the gospel that was preached? And, and, and we don't have to you don't have to ignore the issues of, of slavery with those men. We can we can lay that on the table. We can sure. talk about that, how wrong it was. Horrific. Uh, the, you know, uh, the, the transatlantic slave trade. We, we have no problem discussing any of those any of those. Issues. Oh, I would love to talk about that, actually. I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need a part two. Would. Yeah, I, I know you would. But but at the end of the day. We can talk about it. No one's embarrassed by that. We can look, we can stand flat footed, uh, clear eyed and talk about those issues and, 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 and the danger of that and, and what was sinful about it. We can do all of that uh, in the same way that we do about King and, and, his, and his issues with, with women. At the end of the day, what matters is who got the gospel right? Was, what about the gospel? Uh, if, if there's a if there's an incorrect proclamation of the gospel that absolutely needs to be addressed, and we, we can we can address it all, um, uh, we can address it all absolutely. But at the end of the day, what matters is is that which will stand uh, up in in eternity. Uh, when when you when you uh, it, scripture is clear that it is appointed unto man wants to die, and after that the judgment. Um, were were you was your was your knee bent? Uh, was was your heart transformed, uh, regenerated? Uh, as a result of hearing the proclamation of a biblical gospel or not, that's that's the that's the bottom line question. Yeah. yeah. See the thing, and I'll, I'll say this, and I'll, I'll let this be my last word, Justin. But as I'm listening to Virgil there, I just happen to flip the Romans Romans five, Romans five six, where it says, "For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly." So when you take a guy like King, King will acknowledge that Christ died, but if he did, if he didn't rise again, if there was no resurrection, then his death is irrelevant too. That's right. That's his right. His death is totally irrelevant. So I would, I would challenge any of your viewers, any of your listeners, to, listeners to ask themselves, especially even if they're a believer in Christ, if they're a professing believer in Christ, why does Jesus matter to you? If Jesus only matters to you from a standpoint of morality. You, you don't understand who Jesus was. You got the wrong Jesus. You've got the wrong gospel. It's not enough to acknowledge that Jesus died. Okay. Now, when King says that the res how you think about the resurrection doesn't matter, and him saying that inherent within that conversation is, is an acknowledgement that Jesus died. You can't have a resurrection of anything that doesn't die. So he acknowledges that Jesus died. But you cannot stop there. But that's where he stopped, apparently. Yep. That's where he stopped. If the, if the resurrection and even the form in which Jesus was resurrected doesn't matter, then that means his death doesn't matter. So we have to be clear on this. This is this is a holistic thing. It's not just one piece. We're talking about an entire biblical theology of the gospel. And if you don't get that, like Virgil said, if you don't get the gospel right, 
I don't, I don't, I, don't, I just yeah. don't know what else to say. So I would challenge even your viewers here to ask, you know, who, who is, hey, it's the, it's the ultimate question, right, of mankind. Who do you say Jesus is? Right. Who do you say Jesus is? Is, is your Jesus the Jesus of Martin Luther King Jr.? Or is your Jesus the Jesus of Paul in Romans 5? That's right. That's right. Can't be both. That's right. Can't be both. Can't be both. Well, brothers, um, I want to, I just want to conclude. We we probably will have an, a lot of people watching who have imbibed to one degree or another the social justice gospel. So I want to give I want to give folks the true gospel, just a clear, succinct, what is the gospel and either either one of you, whoever wants to do well, that. That's, that's, I got to hand it out to my guy, Verge, because he does an amazing job. Virgil, give yeah, us the gospel, abso brother. Abso absolutely. The, the, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is, is his life death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of sin. The fact that God the Father in eternity past uh, knew that we would be sinful, that we would that we would fall into sin. And as a result, laid out a plan before the foundation of the world that he would send his one and only son uh, in, in the form of, 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 hum of human flesh, uh, born of a virgin, uh, to live the perfect life that none of us could live. Uh, he lived a perfect life for his entirety in thought, in word, in deed, uh, never, ever sinning. Uh, and, and, as, and as a result of, of this perfect life that he, he gave of himself by, by dying upon a cross uh, and, 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 and rising from the dead, confirming that the substitutionary death was, was, was received by the Father, uh, and that those of us who would repent of our sin and place our faith in him would indeed experience and have eternal life. Uh, and, and those who would, would, would repent uh, and again, bow the knee, uh, bow the knee to the pride, bow, bow the knee to, to their desire to, to, to win some, some temporal uh, a goal or, or opportunity or some economic uh, you know, a, a goal you know, a, a, a rung on the ladder. If, if they would let go of that, and recognize their sinfulness before a holy God, uh, repent of that sin and place their full faith in Christ. Again, they, they would inherit the, the, the free gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Brothers, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for helping us think through these issues. Um, thank you for your ministries. Thank you for your personal standpoint. Thank you for your friendships. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I treasure, I treasure you both of you men uh, very much. So, uh, Justin, we're going to be together in April, right? Yes, we are. That's right, April uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the the Bible Belt Conference. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, virtually you're going to be I'll, there too. I'll, I'll, I'll actually be there too. I'll be there too. Hey, all yeah, right. All <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. So I'll put a link to that too, but down below in the is, description. Is that, is that how they say it down there, uh, Justin Jackson? Yes, I've heard people say it. Not normally. No, it's not the typical pronunciation. That's that's a, <laughs> that's a bit of an exaggeration. So <laughs> I'm I'm originally from Vicksburg, which was about uh, uh, about. 45 miles due west of Jackson. But. Yeah, man. Very, very in, 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 in extremely historic city, uh, Vicksburg. It uh, was, with, yeah. With the Civil it is, War yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very familiar with that area. Yep. That's right. Yep. Um, yeah. A lot of, a lot of history there. A lot of history yep. there. So, all right. Well, brothers, uh, where can people, I want, I want to point people your direction. So where can people find out more about it? You don't just do the Just Thinking podcast, link down below, but you've also written some books. So um, how can people find out more about you and your your resources and avail themselves? Yeah, you, 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 could you could check us out on, uh, uh, you can get us on Amazon. We've got Just Thinking About the State, uh, which was uh, published with uh, Founders Press, as is Just Thinking About Ethnicity. Uh, and yep. then uh, we've got here at G3 Press, um, um, uh, what's, what is it? Um, yeah, I said right behind you, man. Why are you afraid? 
That's right. The book right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Written so many books, you can't even remember them all. Written so many uh, the books, you book, can't keep them. The, the book's right behind me. Why Why? Why are you afraid? And uh, yeah, in fact, it, you, I mean, you, you can order any of these on, on Amazon or go to g3men.org. Uh, or go to Founders org. Press, yeah, in any 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 one of those Founders dot org, uh, you can you can order the books there and uh, and and have those in front of you and as well. So, yeah, download the Just Thinking podcast wherever you listen to uh, podcasts on your favorite uh, mobile device, or you can listen online at justthinking.me, justthinking.me, and then Virgil and I are both active on social media, so uh, you can find us on social media as well. All right. It is one of my great joys uh, for this YouTube channel to be able to point people in the direction of some good, faithful brothers doing some good work, good resources that will encourage and edify them and strengthen their walk with Christ. So it is my joy to do that. So folks, go their directions. All right. And Virgil and Daryl, Lord willing, I will see you guys in person in about a month. And uh, thank you, brothers. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us, man. We love you, man. All right. Love y'all too. All right. Well, dear ones, thank you very much for joining us. I hope that this was encouraging and edifying and helpful for you to think through these issues. Thank you so much for watching. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you all.